What's up guys, Jason here, and these are tips you need to know when you're first starting out in No Man's Sky. So, when you first start out and you start a fresh game and you've never played No Man's Sky before, these are the things you want to know because they're going to make your life so much easier playing No Man's Sky. Now, when you first start out, you're going to start out on a really bad planet. It's going to have a, a hazard atmosphere. Either you're going to be toxic or too hot, too cold, something like that. And you're going to be continually dying. Your hazard protection is going to be draining. And the big thing is you have to look for sodium. Sodium is a yellow plant that glows. But you can't scan. You don't have a scanner. You don't have any of that starting equipment yet because you just started out. So the the trick that I learned that it's amazing is you, if, you go, if you press down on your D-pad, go over to photo mode. And on PC, I don't know what you would do to go into photo mode to get your quick menu. But you go into photo mode. All right, and it pauses everything. So you're paused. Nothing happens while you're in photo mode. But the key is you could change the... Uh, so let's aim down and move the, the sun in any direction we want. So we move the sun down there. So now it's dark. And the best thing about that is you could see... Okay, red, that's your oxygen plant. Let's look around. Looking for yellows. Yellow, right over there, you see? Now if you find a yellow plant, like that one over there, you see how it's yellow glowing? And it's the best if, at night, so you want it to be dark. That is sodium, so that's where the sodium is. And there's a sodium over there, and it just makes it so much easier to find plants, especially you don't have your, your scanner working, your analyzer working either, so there's more oxygen right there. So yeah, that way you don't have to worry about it. And if you just back out of it, it resets everything back to where it should be. So now you can go find it. And there's my oxygen. My, uh, my sodium should be right over here. So let's go find that. Yep, right there, look at, beautiful. So now you know exactly where to go and you're gonna need a lot of sodium to help you survive. You're gonna need a lot of oxygen for your life support. And so that's a really easy way to do it, especially when you first start out, you don't have a scanner. Totally the easiest way to do it. Now, once you've done that and you start building and fixing your starship, you're gonna get out of here and go to a space station. So let's hit that space station. I'm gonna show you some cool things on space stations. All right, you guys. Now, when you first land on a space station, you'll come in, you'll hit a landing pad. And the other key thing to remember is, anytime you land on a landing pad, it does not take any fuel to launch off of it. So you do not use launch fuel if you land on a landing pad. So you always want to try to aim for landing pads. If you're on a planet or if you're on a space station, whatever, you want to find landing pads so you don't use any launch fuel. Now you first get out. On the right hand side over here, these are going to be your nanite cluster shops. Now these are going to take you to get nanite clusters. Look up the link up top and down below in the description if you want to find out how to get nanite clusters. But this is going to be these are going to be the shops that you need to go to if you want to buy anything. Now, starting on the farthest left, this is for your exosuit. These are upgrades for your exosuit. So if you want to be able to last longer on hot planets, cold planets, whatever, or if you want upgrades to your jetpack or your life support, you go there. This one here, the second one, this is going to be for your exocraft. Now these are little like uh, cars that you can use on the planet surface. And they're pretty cool and there's upgrades for that. There's also a submarine too if you want to get that. But you have to get those and then you, you buy the upgrades here. Now the next one over, this is for your star ship. If you want to fly faster, if you want to have better shields, if you want to use a hyperdrive and go farther, these are where you find the upgrades for that. And lastly, this is the multi-tool shop. Now, you want to go in here because you can look at multi-tools. Look at this cool multi-tool right here. That is a cool looking multi-tool. Look at that thing. But this is where you get the multi-tool at. And so you can buy this if you have enough credits. And whenever you go to buy something, you can compare it. And you can trade in yours to get this one. And I'm not going to trade mine in because I have an experimental S class one that's the best you can get is s but a is pretty decent too whatever you you're going for just get whatever is better whatever fits your style pistols usually have lower slots like this is a pistol so it has 10 i have a rifle so it has 24 you don't need 24 i mean this is overkill definitely 
You're going to need... 10 is pretty good. You're going to want about 10 to 15. That way you can fully upgrade your scanner, your mining beam, and one weapon. I have two weapons fully maxed out. I have everything... Yeah, so this is way overkill. You don't absolutely need this. I just like having it all. But you can also buy the upgrades from the technician right here. And they will give you upgrades for your weapons, for your uh, scanner, for your mining tool, all that stuff. Then, oh, let me, before I forget, let me show you this. You'll see these cool little orange cubes on the desks around. You can actually go over and they're all over the place. They're going to be orange, there's going to be blue ones, they're all over the place. But if you go over to it, you see it's encrypted navigational data and you can go and pick it up. And sometimes you'll get navigational data like that, and navigational data is pretty important. You can use that to find different things on planets, so you want to pick those up. Sometimes, like this one, it gave me 10 nanite clusters. All right, so you get nanite clusters for doing it. And that's not a, you know, not too much of a joke. Oh, look at this one. That's a cool looking fighter right there. But yeah, and so you want to pick up those cubes whenever you can, because you, they will give you items that you want. Look at this, it's a cool little shuttle too, I like that. Now, that's another thing too. Whenever you land and there's other ships landing, like if you're on a, uh, a trading platform or a space station and you're looking for a cool ship, generally you can just go over here and you can talk to the person, or the, the alien. You can say, hey, you know, I can buy items, I can sell items. I can also make an offer on a ship and see, hey, you know, I want to see what your ship is. So I, can, I know it's an A class and I know it has 22 slots in the general inventory. I can look at stats here. And I can negotiate price, and I can trade in mine, or I can buy a new one. Now, I'm not going to do that because I have a really cool hauler, and so it's not worth it. Definitely not, so I'm going to decline this. But if you don't want to go through all of that, like if you're really trying to find like a whole bunch of ships land, and you want to get to them before they fly away, all you got to do is pull out your scanner, hit your left trigger, and look at that right there in the, the left-hand side. It says uh, Shideki's Voyage Shuttle. That's the type of ship it is. It's an A class and it has 22 general plus 6 technology and it costs 1,690,000 units. That way you can get a, just a quick snapshot of what it is. That way you know, okay, that's worth it. I'm going to look at that. Or, no, I'm looking for an S class. I don't want that one. So I'm going to look at this one. And there you go. See, that's an A class fighter. That's the type of ship. A class 19 general inventory and 4 technology sl slots. And it costs 2,550,000 units. That way I can kind of get the gist of whatever that is. So we're good to go. Now, on the other side of the space station right here. Let's go up here. Oh. This is where most of the aliens are going to be. And you can talk to them. And you can kind of you can learn words. You can ask for directions. Things like that for any one of these guys. And it's always going to be the race of that system. So if you're in a Viking system like me... All you're going to see are a lot of Vikings all over the place. See? But you'll run into some cool looking ones. Like here. There you go. Here's a Traveler. And Travelers are pretty special. Look at that. I have three Travelers. I have one, two, and I think one over here. Yeah, three different Travelers on here. That's pretty rare. Usually you'll find like one maybe. They're really hard to find. I got three of them on here. So your normal race, whatever it is, you can ask them for directions and stuff like that. With the Traveler, this is really important. You can talk to them, and you can either... Let's look at that. You can offer them Nanites, and if you give them 15 Nanites, they will give you units in return. So this is a good way to make money if you have a ton of Nanites, and you need some units, you can trade you, you know, Nanites for units. That's awesome. Or you can ask where they came from. Now, this is really important early on in the game because they will tell you... They will point you in the direction of a grave site. And once you get there, it'll give you a glyph. And glyphs are important. You want to get glyphs. There's 16 glyphs total. Link up top and down below in the description. Tell you what you can do with glyphs. Or you can barter with them. And barter, you give them a material, like 200 sodium nitrate. And they will give you something random in return. And sometimes it's worth it. Sometimes it's not worth it. It's kind of like a, 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 a gamble on whether they're going to give it to you, a good item or not. So... I'm not going to do any of that stuff. I just want to show you guys. So definitely look for alien or travelers when you're on a space station. Those guys are super important. I mean, you, it, they're kind of rare to find. It's like even more rare when you see three of them here. That's crazy. So that's awesome. Now, once you've you know hit the space station and you've gotten all of that stuff, 
Then you can go back down to the planet, and I'm going to show you guys what you could do with your multi-tool, all right? So let's do it. All right, guys. Now, once you get down to a planet and you have a terrain manipulator, you can get resources out of the ground. Like right here, I have a resource deposit. I have copper. So go to it, and if you want to find one, there are these cool, like, diamond shapes. Where is one? Boom, boom, boom. Oh, right there, boom, right there. So you can see that's a cobalt deposit, and it's 827 units away. So you can go find that, and I have one right here. Now once you pull out your terrain manipulator, once you hit, you know, you can go left and right on the D-pad. Now this is really important because, see how I have, it gives you like a little circle to represent what it's gonna destroy? Now if you hit left, it's the smallest one. If you hit right, it gets bigger and bigger. See how it's gonna destroy a big old area. That's the biggest one you can get. And the center is kind of a medium. So you have a large, a medium, and a small. Now the difference between all of these is the smallest one, they will give you it will give you the most resources from a deposit. You'll get tons and tons of resources, but it uses a lot of fuel. So you're gonna use a ton of fuel, but you'll get a ton of resources. Now the largest one will use less fuel, but you'll get less resources as well. So you have to pick what you want to do. Like if you just want to get rid of a resource, like if it's in the way, like if you have a, a huge hill that you want to get rid of, use the biggest one because it'll just get rid of the biggest chunk at the same time for less resource or less fuel. But if you're trying to get a, the most out of your resources, let's go to the smallest one and you'll see it does a, it uses a lot of fuel. Like my, look at that, my meter's going down real fast over there, but I'm getting a ton of resources out of it. Now look at that, boom, and I'm just going through, like a madman, going crazy. You know, look, you see, I got a whole bunch and I use a lot of it. So let's go to the largest one right here. This is the biggest one. And look, at it's just destroying tons of it at the same time. But I'm not getting a lot of resources out of it. But look at it, I mean, I got rid of it real quick. But I didn't get that many resources. So it's not really worth it unless you're like trying to make a hole or something like that. Like if you're trying to do that, like you're shaping the terrain, the big one is awesome, but if you're trying to get resources, you always want to go left on the D-pad and go to the smallest one you can. That way, you don't have to, you know, you get as many resources as you can out of it. Now, if you're trying to refuel everything, press down on your D-pad and you'll see a little battery. It says recharge equipment. Then you can press up and you go over to your terrain manipulator. And you'll see it has three different elements. Each one of these I can use. But you always want to go with the most condensed version because it costs less to recharge your item. And I'll show you that right now. Oh, we're going to the... Because you can't see it when you do the quick menu, but if you go in here to the train manipulator and you hit it, look at that. It takes 11 magnetized ferrite, 54 pure ferrite, or 108 ferrite dust. So you always want to use your most condensed material because it uses less, number one. And number two, it overall is cheaper. Because, I mean, it takes two ferrite dust to make one pure ferrite. And it takes two pure ferrite to make one magnetized. So one of these is four of the ferrite dust. So it should take four times less, right? But no, it takes 10 times less. So it's cheaper overall. You can carry more items, that way you don't have to worry about carrying so much magnetized ferrite, because it only takes 11 to recharge. So you always, always, always want to recharge using your most condensed material. And then lastly, I want to show you guys a really cool mining tip that I learned, and it's pretty awesome. So, where's a, um... Let's say you want to, you need to get a whole bunch of carbon. And you know these plants right here give you carbon, right? So let's back up a little bit. There's a sentinel over there. Now, if you're mining around a sentinel, they will get angry and they'll attack you. But if you're far away, whoop, there's a sentinel over here. Where's the sentinel at? Oh, okay, he's just freaking out, okay. But yeah, see how that sentinel, he, he looks at whatever you're trying to mine. So he goes to the original place. Now look at that. I'm mining it and I'm very far away. But look at that sentinel. He doesn't know what to do because he doesn't know where it's coming from. He just knows that 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 cactus is being destroyed. But you can do this all day. As long as you're far enough away and don't shoot the sentinel. Once you shoot him, he knows where he's coming from. So try not to hit him. Oh, oh God, like that. Don't hit him like that. Go below him. 
But yeah, and so you can do this all day and he won't know where it's coming from. And so he'll keep looking around and he's just, you know, confused. Like, what the hell is going on? But, I mean, look at this. I can do this all day long and he'll never know it was me. And look at it, just chilling out. I can do this forever. And so that's definitely a, a good way to mine stuff if you don't want to be caught by the sentinels. Just mine from far off. Now you want to be a good distance away, but you also you want to be able to do some damage. And so you see I'm doing like 100, 8, 87, things like that. So I'm doing some good damage, and so I'm actually, you know, doing some work to it. But the Sentinel still is too far away, he doesn't know what's going on. That one's really far off, I don't know if it's going to matter. Let's see. J your your multi-tool has a long, long reach. See, I got that one. And it, all the materials come right to you, so you don't have to be close by in order to get the materials. You just have to destroy it, and you're good to go. So hopefully you guys like these tips that I gave you. These are just quick ones when you're first starting out, where you guys have no idea how to play the game. Hopefully you guys found this interesting and, and helpful. If you did, hit that like button for me. And if you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. I have tons of tip videos in my channel, so look around and see what you like. And I'll see you guys in the next one.